know, it's weird. Uh, being a voice actor and doing a convention, and I consider a hard work, thank you so much, uh, a hard work week, even doing a convention, because for me, it's easy to be energetic for you guys, because for me, it's kind of like a spirit bomb. Like, I had one hour of sleep yesterday, and I still didn't go to bed till like 12.30, and I could have gone to bed at seven or eight or nine, or whatever, while I was trying to get my luggage also, which was a giant nightmare. But um, uh, I got it finally. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, you guys come up here so excited. I just, that's, that's like totally a spirit bomb for me. So I get all energized. And really what I need is because I talk loud and I'm talking all day, I, you know, I want to do one of those uh, sensory deprivation tanks. But what I try to do uh, when I relax is I'll tell my girlfriend, I'm like, uh, I'll be playing video games, which I do to relax sometimes, but we'll play games. Like, I got to go be horizontal for a little bit. And what that means is I need to be on the bed but not sleeping <laughs> and just not having stimulus. But I will um, play my guitar, and I will meditate on playing scales or, or songs I want to play. I'll play my horn. I will play Borderlands, which I call Bonerlands, with uh, my girlfriend. She's really good at uh, that. I'll play Mario Kart, which she's a master of. She can beat anybody. Uh, we'll play that. Um, or I'll play, I find, believe it or not, even though it's a violent game, I find uh, Dark Souls really relaxing because of the environment. I love Dark Souls. Um, and I just started playing two on the PS4. Um, and I play games, play musical instruments, aren't just completely non-stimulus to relax, if that answers the question. Thank you, yes. I can't legally do that, and uh, I have to, the voice of Goku, as I do the voice of Goku, I cannot use that voice uh, with a character named Goku in any other series, even if it's a show where the character's called Goku and doesn't look like Goku, or I can't, I can do the voice, if you watch Kappa Mikey, it's practically Goku's voice, I can do it there, because it's a character called Gonard, and it's not in the Dragon Ball Z universe. Um, no, I, I I would with, you know, Toye and, and Suisha's and Funimation's sanction, but I can't otherwise, sorry. All right, thank you. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, it depends. Um, when they do those little cut scenes like that, if they're cut exactly like they are in the previous episode, in terms of flat mouth flap, they'll drag, they'll grab the audio and drop it in. But a lot of times they do weird edits, and they'll actually, they'll have to reanimate some things that make you think that it's the same scene, but it's really not, it might be slightly longer or shorter, and we will have to re-record that a decent amount of time, yeah. That's an interesting question, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Just mess around with the voices and call each other He, well, Chris is, Chris is a funny guy because the whole time we've been playing these characters, and, and this happened the first time when we were having a celebration dinner after finishing Battle of Gods with Justin Cook, who's the voice of Yusuke on Yu Yu Hakusho and our producer. Um, I, I, we were talking about the Dragon Ball in a way that we think fans think we talk about Dragon Ball, which is all the time in great detail, which we don't. So at that dinner I said, wow, we're doing that thing after 15 years that everyone thinks we do that we don't do. And we're chuckling about that. But in recent months, Chris has gotten in the habit of texting me as Vegeta. Yeah, I showed that. And that's one of several texts he sends me. I'll get into a hotel, and I'll say, what floor are you on? I go, I'm on the 21st floor. And he goes, damn you, Kakarot, besting me again. I'm only on the 9th, 19th floor. And then the last con I went to, I said, I'm on this floor. And he goes, he was above me. He goes, ha ha, finally I have bested you and have a floor superior to yours. And I'm like, I'm like worried about you. Why do you do that? And, and the thing is, is like, he has a, he has a fun time doing that because Vegeta's a really fun character to play. But for me, it's really hard to ad-lib as Goku because he's always like manically happy or pissed off. And then he's always saying like, not stupid things, but just like, you know, be like, walking around like this all the time. When the, which is not as fun as, up yours, you know? That's fun. So I think he does it because he gets a real kick out of it. Also my personality is, my texts to him kind of are goku -y, so my personality is a little, who feel like that, you know? So he just responds and stuff like that. Um, and that's why I bought him a, a PlayStation with, a, you saw him as deal with, with a 9001 etched on the controller. I, I bought him a PlayStation 4 completely plain painted in gold with a gold controller, which you can get from colorware.com, by the way, which is awesome if you want a custom controller. And, uh, and then I, I sent him a note that says, hey, Vegeta, I found the Dragon Balls and, and, and wished you a, a gold, a sweet gold PS4, Goku. And he put it on his Instagram. And he's like, oh, I've got the console of legend or something like that. He did something like that. It was, uh, he's really funny and ad living with that. So, uh, awesome. yeah. Also, uh, my favorite part from the Battle of the Gods is when you imitate Vegeta. My Bulma! Oh, <laughs> that was one take. I go, I just asked Chris before I did. I go, hey, can I do my Vegeta impression for this line? He goes, yeah, go ahead. 
And then, so I thought it was funny. You were all like, my mama! And then, oh, I got lucky on that one, yeah. Thank you, that's my, that's my favorite part. And when the dragon gets nervous about Beerus. And I told Beerus, I go, can you, can you make the dragon say at some point, tell your mom I said hi? <laughs> You know, oh, tell your mom I said hi. But he, they wouldn't fit, and it wasn't in the script. So he's like, no, I can't do that. But. Uh, thank you. And also, I, I think you could rewrite Mario Kart. Uh, man, hang on, I gotta just hang on, text her. No, she's Mario Kart, the new one for Wii U. Well, I was talking about 64. I can't. 64, she can be, she might get on Wii, on Wii or Wii U. She's a master. I don't know how good she is at 64, but I know she had a 64 back in the day. But she might be, she's younger than me. She's she's 34, I think 34, 35. So she she grew up playing. Mario Kart. She has her original Nintendo from 1985 sitting on our, our console. And that's crazy. She's totally hardcore Nintendo, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, Battle of Gods is my favorite because uh, it's new animation. That, it's beautiful. It's great because the first half of it is very Dragon Ball-y. You get the comedy of Dragon Ball and you get the, some of the characters from there. And then the last half is Dragon Ball Z-E. And so you get a lot of fighting and you get these two new characters, Beerus and Whis, that are really, really cool. Um, and it, and it, so, if you, and I, my agent came with me to the movie, and, and I asked her, I go, did you follow it? And she's like, yeah, no problem. Because a lot of times, you get on Z, you got to watch, like, I didn't even know what was going on the first two or three weeks of recording. I still didn't know what was going on. So you got to follow Z a lot when you first start to get everything, understand who everybody is. And she was able to follow everything on Dragon Ball, uh, on Dragon Ball a Battle of Gods very easily. Okay, we have some weird things happening, and they're going to hit a camera if they're not careful. Is this person in trouble? What is the problem? What? We're interrupting my panel. Why? What? What, what, what are they doing? I, I, I'm sorry I can't help you right now. Are you okay? Are you guys okay? Who is the cosplayer? Oh, yeah, I can see now. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do this panel, and you guys get that person a sense of being, and uh, we will talk to you after this is over. Thank you. What's that? Four, Forty-five after or so? I guess I don't know. I'll be over at my autograph table later. Thank you guys. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. What? Find what? Zelda? I you know I. I think she's dead. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I like that movie. Sorry about the interruption. I like that in a, that movie uh, for that reason, and uh, I think uh, Resurrection of F's even better. Let's hope so. I mean, I'm sure the majority of us are anxious to see what's going on. Yeah. And, yeah. I think it, I think it will be. I mean, I don't want to put my opinion on you, and if you don't like it, you know, I get it. But so I don't want to like. I'm not a big believer in hype, so I think it's awesome. And it did 26 million in Japan already, so it's that people are going to see it. So I'm very excited. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Sorry about the interruption. Thank you. Yeah. He mentions who that is in Battle of Gods. I thought he refers to it at some point. Was it Frieza? Weiss, Weiss right? Referring to Weiss. Okay, and that's clear. So yeah, I guess it would be Weiss. And for those of you seen Battle of Gods, well, has everybody seen Battle of Gods? Yeah. Okay. So you know that Weiss is Beerus's teacher. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, I'll play as Piccolo sometimes because I like Piccolo. I'm a big Piccolo fan, and I like. I wish there was like you could play Gregory, like little tiny Gregory versus Bubbles. You know, <laughs> Bubbles. <laughs> Gregory, Bubbles. I love Bubbles. Bubbles is one of my favorite characters. Chris Boy Chris Sabat voices Bubbles. <laughs> yeah, he does. Thank you. If I remember it, if I can do it, don't, don't, don't stop, don't stop, wait, don't stop, I can't do it. We, we can't find paradise, all we have to do is go, go free your soul. I guess close, is that close enough? I don't know. That's all right. So, yeah, dragon soul. Yeah, I remember that. Thank you. My voice is killing me, though. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> you better your life, I guess? Well, yeah, that's a... You know, I know I've got a couple minutes, so I might go over a bit, but that's a really good question because I had a very difficult childhood, as many of us do, um, and I won't go into detail on that, but needless to say, it caused me to have a lot of uh, issues that were psychological that uh, were preventing me from accessing what I believe was my full potential and talent as a human being. 
And I can say that my success uh, as a voice actor, uh, I did not take acting classes. I studied music and I took one acting class. Uh, and maybe it shows sometimes because my acting's not always that great. I don't know. But I keep getting hired, so that's a good sign. Um, and I'll keep doing it as long as they keep hiring me. But uh, Goku was my first audition and my first role. And it opened doors for me. It didn't, it didn't you know, give me the financial resources I needed until later, but it opened up doors to more financial resources that allowed me to uh, get the therapy I needed to improve my life and meet people who could uh, connect me to other people who would take me to a level of, of, of professionals and people that could help me. And then when you mix that with having a job that is so gratifying that when you get depressed, meaning me, when I, get, when I got depressed and when I felt like giving up, it was all you guys that, and that I, not that I've met any of you personally until today, but um, as all the fans I would think about, I'm like, well, I can't quit now because I have to do this. And because I couldn't quit, that kept me in the game long enough to spend the money on the help I needed to like, work on issues I had, which I have, and it's my life's way better because of it. I'm a much different and much happier person because of Akira Toriyama. Thank you. I'm Greg Z. And... And it's interesting to me because I've, I've spent decades thinking about this because I believe in cause and effect. I'm, I'm, I'm a believer in that. And um, uh, I can remember the, the second... I would not be Goku. I'm going to tell a story. I don't give a shit how long it takes. But um, <laughs> I would not be Goku if there was this one moment uh, when I was working... I was working as a hornist and I was married and, and unhappy. Uh, and... Uh, there was one moment where I was about to get on this escalator in North Park Center in Dallas and go down it, and I had visited a puppet theater uh, that I was looking for a bee puppet for a, a brass quintet I was in, and I visited it previously, and I, I was about to put my foot on the escalator to go down, and I saw the theater, and I thought, I'll go in there one more time just to see if they have that puppet again and check out that puppet theater. And uh, I went in, and there was a guy working there, and we were talking about puppets, and I was messing around with them, and doing voices on him, and he goes, how'd you like a job here? Not doing, I thought I was to do voices, even though I wasn't a voice actor, but I knew I could do good voices because my friends always told me I did. And, uh, and I like doing it, and I go, I go, well, I don't know, let me check it out. And I didn't like marionettes, I liked hand puppets. And it was a marionette theater, and he took me back there, and, and he sh did a show quick for me. And it was remarkable, it was amazing. And I was like, I would totally love to work here. And so from there, uh, I met people who introduced me to a world of artistry that I was not aware of, and if I had not taken that, if I'd taken that step down that escalator, I wouldn't be there today, because then I met people who talked me into uh, auditioning for Dragon Ball Z, and I did some voices in the puppet theater, which got me excited about doing voices, which was technically my first job, although Goku was my first real audition. Um, and that led to that audition, which led to everything else after that. So you got so think about it, you got a guy who's Japanese named Akira Toriyama, he draws this cartoon in the 80s, it's out in the universe, you got me in Texas, Funimation comes to Texas, I take this one choice, and here I am, right now. So, when you make those choices, think about them, you know what I mean? And remember them. So, you know, so, because you never know where you, I wouldn't know any of you, I would not be here, I'd, I'd be dead probably, I don't know, it really saved my life, it really uh, got me to a place where I could get the help I needed, and uh, meet people, and afford that help, because I didn't have any insurance or anything, so. I owe my life to Kira Toriyama and, and Dragon Ball Z, absolutely. So I can't quit, you know. I used to joke that if I finished Dragon Ball Z, I could die. I'd be like, okay, I, you know, everybody wants to leave a legacy, whether you're an author or a doctor or a mother or a father, any, something that's permanent. And I don't have any kids, so I'm like, if I could just leave this legacy of Dragon Ball Z to my sister's kids or something, I can die. And when we finish up Z, I'm like, okay, so if I die now, I'll be cool. And they're like, oh, uh, we're going to do Dragon Ball Z Kai. Oh, I guess I can't die. Oh, okay, so we're going to do... And it was all based on that. And now I just don't think about it anymore. I'm, I guess I'm not... I guess I'm doing this forever. I'm, um, we got, and I thought I was done with the Battle of Gods. And they, oh, we're going to do a movie. Oh, okay, now we're going to do Super. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'm, I'm pretty much going to be playing Goku the rest of my life, you know? So uh, that's not a bad way to have it. <laughs> Yeah, me there am I, so thank you so much. I think I have to wrap up, right, George? Um, I'm going to be over at my table now until this place closes or beyond. So thank you. You guys have been incredible and warm and loving, and I'm very, very grateful. You guys, I, I do a lot of shows. You guys are hardcore fans. Trust, trust me. Thank you so much. I love you, McAllen. Thank you.